How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Hopefully, it's having a lovely day. So, the Cincinnati Reds sign Jamir Candelario, and all the Reds fans are understandably saying, Hey, what about the pitching? Um, I, I don't know if you looked or not last season. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty at all, that starting pitching from an ERA standpoint. Reds got to pick some players up. And they go out and they sign a free agent infielder, the most crowded position on the Cincinnati Reds team. And people say, hey, what's going on here? Uh, what was going on here? I think what we have to be thinking is potentially going on here. What the Reds are planning to do is say, hey, somebody has to be getting traded. It doesn't make sense to have six infielders. And again, here's the thing with Candelaria. You, you sign this player every single day of the week for that contract. You know, his, his projections, they were saying it was 17 million. So they actually got him a little under value market. They didn't overpay for this guy. And he can bring a lot to the team and a lot to the table. You want guys on this team that are proven that can do that. Um, so it's good to have him. It's just, again, it's always so difficult because you want to make sure your young guys are playing. You want to get these guys, especially when you feel so good about them, like some of these Reds uh, up and coming pros, but you want to make sure they're playing. That's the concern. So that being said, you gotta you gotta do something with these. The last thing you want to do is have eleven starters, two of them on a bench. When you're not when you're on the bench, you're not getting consistent at bats. That kind of hurts you. It hurts the morale. It hurts your growth, especially as younger. It hurts the growth. And all of a sudden, maybe one of these young studs are batting two thirty this season. And all of a sudden, last season you're gonna trade them and say, "Oh, that's a lot of trade value." Marte Kid to carry to cover off the ball. CES playing great. Maddie McLean had a good season. You know, all of a sudden you say, "Hey." Could have got some great trade value out of one of those guys. Now, all of a sudden, the uh, teams are a little bit more skeptical. And that's where I think the Reds are. And they say, you know what? When they come out like a house of fire like that, when they have all this hype around them, when they go out and prove themselves. Matty McClain batted 290 last season. Marte came in there and played outstanding. CES played outstanding. Spencer Steer played outstanding. The last thing you want to think about as a Reds fan is trading one of those players away. But at the same time, you have to put yourself in another team's shoes right now. Now, the Reds already signed the Hunter Green. Let, let, let's try Nick Lodolo. Would you want to trade away? Oh, or Andrew Abbott. Maybe. Andrew Abbott is probably a great or better example. Would you want to trade away Andrew Abbott for a couple prospects? Probably not. Probably not. Not, not, not. Right now, he's, you know, he's your three-man in rotation. He's got two-man upside. He's got ace upside. And that's what the Reds are looking for out of a starting pitcher. They're looking like maybe a third in rotation guy. You're looking for a potential being a two or one and a young guy under team control for a long time. And if you're the Reds, there's no chance. There's no chance the Reds would trade him away for a couple prospects. And I think as buyers of pitchers, we have to keep that in mind as a Reds fan base, a Reds organization. Like, hey, if, if we're not going to do it, ain't nobody else going to do it. What would the Reds potentially do if they said, hey, let's trade away Andrew Abbott? Uh, let's talk to me about... Maybe not now, probably a little late. You know, let, let's talk about Ozzy Albies or, you know, you know, a younger guy. Juan Soto, obviously, way out of the books. You know, you talk about some of these younger guys that are good hitters with a lot of potential. Maybe they're not proven all-stars yet, but they have a lot of potential. They come up to the majors and they've put up really good at-bats. A team that's got plenty of starting pitchers, or plenty of pitchers in the organization, but they're missing some young bats. So say, all right, let's make a trade. We want to win now, too. We want guys under team control. Everybody wants guys under team control. There's, there's not a team in the league that doesn't want that. Unless you're a six-year rebuilding process, you want a young guy under team control for three to four years. And that's why it's so difficult for any team who want to go out there and trade a player away. And so if you're the Reds, you say, okay, we'll help you in a position of need that's weak for you, and you help us in a position of weak for third. And as difficult as it is to say, if the Reds want a top three rotation type of pitcher, an ace caliber young pitcher, they have to give up a Marte or a CES or I, I, I imagine Ellie's untouchable or Maddie McLean or a Spencey Steer. And that's a difficult to hear. Could they potentially give up Jonathan India? I mean, that's a possibility. I don't know where teams view Jonathan India right now. He's a proven player, third year, uh, fourth year in the league. I'm not sure. I have to see what the table is saying there, but something tells me they'd want a little bit more than that. They want a younger guy. And here's the thing that is always, and not the, you know, be the pessimist. I hate, I hate to have to bring it up, but it, it, it's, it's facts. Besides of what's happening with Atlanta. I mean, it, it, the odds of all these prospects turning out to be studs, turning out to be everyday starters, turning out to be 250 plus hitters is very, very slim. And as a Reds organization, I mean, it's your job and it's a gamble, but it's your job to gamble and say, which one of these guys has really high trade value right now that we think year two, year three comes in and they're not as good. 
you know, maybe they came out like a house of fire riding 270, 280, 300. And all of a sudden, you know what? Year two comes around. Teams start. And this is the game of baseball. It's through and through. It's, you know, you have your really good hitters. They come in like a house of fire. They fall off the cliff. They adjust because the pitchers adjusted to them and they adjust to the pitchers. They come back and, you know, they go up, they go down, and then they go back up. And then your, you know, your average players, maybe your below average players, your guys that can't sustain the league, you know, they go up, they go down. And then they kind of go up a little bit and they plateau or they stay down. They don't adjust. And those guys that stay down and don't adjust. Typically don't have long careers in MLB. And because the Reds have so many of these young players that really didn't play, you know, they played three months last season, two months last season, four months. They really haven't experienced that low yet of pitchers adjusting to them and then, you know, adjusting to uh, what the pitchers are giving them which for the Reds plays right into their hand because everybody sees all these beautiful prospects that just play excellent baseball for the Reds this season. Who wouldn't want to trade for Marte? Guy batted 300 last year. CES came in or batted the way. Who wouldn't want to trade for those guys? Now, if you wait a year, and I think that was a concern of the Indians, like you traded him last year at 240. He's like, oh, it's a down year. He's a rookie. They're not a big deal. Get rid of him. Now, two years in a row, you're starting to question it. You get a down year out of one of these guys, and all of a sudden, you know what? The trade value goes down, straight down the toilet. The flip side of that is you can't predict entirely how that's going to turn out because who's to say that happens? Who's to say Martin doesn't bat 300 again this season? Who's to say McLean doesn't bat 300 again this season, right? That's the difficult predicament the Reds are in right now because all these guys as a Reds fan and watching these guys play, you feel like they got those sort of capabilities. But you, you, let's, you know, we, we went through it because, again, we talked about the adjustment phase, how important it is. Uh, looking at some of these guys, how they batted in September when the scouting reports started to come out for some of these guys. Strand batted 323 uh, or 318. Will Benson batted 323 in the month of September. Uh, Matty McLean did not play in September of the injury. Now, McLean was an interesting one, believe this or not. I mean, he's batting mid 300s in April and, you know, down to 300, 290, 280, 270, 260. He's slowly, every single month, seen his, you know, average dip by about 10 points. I love McLean. I, 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 I have the tunnel vision on him. I do wonder about that, though, because when you see the slow regression throughout the season. Was pitcher starting to figure out his tendencies, his weaknesses? Or was it a coincidence? We, we won't know. But you do wonder about that. You say, hey, right now, 290 looks like a stud. But he batted 270, 260 the last couple months. It's like, what if he comes in this season? He's batting 270, 260. That's still a solid hitter if he does that in side of career. But if it keeps slowly declining, more and more teams figure out that report. You never know. That, that's the game. That is the game we play as fans, as manager. It is a gamble. It is a risk all across the board with these young players. That's the game. When you trade away a talented player for a couple prospects, you're saying, hey, we hope a couple of these guys turn out. Right now, we have no clue. We hope a couple turn out. And all of a sudden, hey, Spencer Steer, you know, the, the, a couple of these guys turn out in the trades and you look like a genius. The flip side of that is you worry if you don't trade some of these players away for starting pitching right now that, hey, missed an opportunity. And the fear of not trading or the fear of trading them away, though, is, hey, this guy just won two MVPs and we trade him away. You don't want to do that either, right? Anyway, Fraley batted 213 in September. Injuries, of course, you remember he came back, played through the injury. He, he was not 100% at all, so you can't, you can't hold that against him. Uh, Marte batted 380. India 205, Ellie 202, Steer 290. So ultimately, if anything, that doesn't make it any easier. All these guys, with the exception of Ellie De La Cruz and Jonathan India, had great Septembers. And Ellie is, he feels like the one of all players that's untouchable. You wonder, though. I mean, if you take the emotion aside, Ellie was supposed to be the best one of all these guys this season. He was the worst one. He's got all the talent in the world. He's the most gifted athlete of them all. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I, I think a lot of fans would, you know, they, they'd want to, they'd want, they'd want the organization, the manager, they want everybody fired right off the bat. But you talk about a guy that's got all the value in the world. It is Ellie. But he's got all the value in the world because this guy could go out there and be a five tool player. He's got a Mike Trout cap capabilities out there. If that, you know, if he can figure it out, figure the batting average out, figure out the hits. And he will. He's a young, he's, he's, he's really young. He's just going to play a lot. But I think some of these other guys, you wonder and say, hey, these corner infielders, because that's the thing about Ellie. I don't think he's going anywhere, not because of his talent, his abilities, his potential. But you, you can throw him anywhere in this field. And he's, again, he's that kind of talent where you can put him anywhere in this field and make him learn a position. He'll be all right. The issue the Reds have is they have all these first basemen, third basemen. And that's why you look back and say Marte or CES or, you know, Steers playing some outfit now, so it's a little bit different. But you look at some of these guys and say, hey, maybe they're the expendable ones. I don't know if the Reds ever. I don't know how much they really believed in Christian Encarnacion's strength in the first place. And it almost makes me feel like he's the one. 
Because you remember, it was early. He started, he was hot. He, he was really good in spring training. They waited to bring him up. They kind of delayed it, delayed it, delayed it. They waited, they waited, they waited. And eventually he did play. But it really felt like he should have been a guy starting from day one. So you wonder what the organization feels of him. But overall, it's, it's gut-wrenching. It's difficult. You don't want to think about it. But I think ultimately, you know, that that's what you have to do is you have to make that blockbuster trade with a younger, talented player, a player that, again, you love, you adore. I think has got all the potential in the world. But when you have a surplus of one position and you're weak in another one, you have to be willing to trade that surplus. The Reds did an excellent job of drafting all these players saying, what are they going to do with all these shortstops or the third base? It's like, you'll figure it out. At the end of the day, you would rather draft those players that are talented players and trade them for another talented player than miss on somebody else in a draft you weren't as confident about or miss on a trade on somebody you wasn't as confident about. You got to have, you know, best possible, best position available, best possible available, we should say, and you go from there and try to build around that. You can never have too many talented players and you'd much rather have the talented players than take a chance. Again, reaching for another player, trading for a player, you don't even feel as confident. I don't, I don't want to trade for this this shortstop because we already got seven of them. Let's trade for this pitcher. Well, we're kind of iffy about it. And then the pitcher never starts. So I like the way the Reds did things. Now we just have to trust this organization uh, making the tough decisions here to see what they do to build this rotation. Love to y'all's thoughts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.